Hello and welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. This is the Wednesday podcast where we look at the intuitive astrology and energies of the week ahead. And this is for December 4th through December 11th. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your presence and time. I really hope that you receive an insightful, uplifting message of some sort during this podcast episode. That is always my intention to reconnect you with your own soul's energy, to remind you of your power, remind you of your choices, and most importantly, remind you that you are supported. You are not alone in these big energies during this past number of years. I know that many of you have gone through life-changing developments, that it has certainly been a very big period of energy, and it's only getting bigger, and that means we keep getting stronger. And that's very essential to understand right now, is that the waves are going to keep coming in as we move into the next decade. They are big waves, they are big energies, but then we rise up. We rise up to meet them, we rise up in our power, we rise up in our capabilities to handle what we are experiencing in this lifetime. And I really hope that this show supports you in understanding that and reminds you that you are more than capable of handling these big rising tides. I want to say a quick thank you to all of you who reach out and share with me your stories, your experiences, and your insights. I truly appreciate it. I do get hundreds of messages and correspondence, and I'm not able to respond to them all, but I really appreciate that you are sharing who you are, and I really hope that you have found more of yourself along the way, the truth of who you are, the parts of you that you came here to work with in this lifetime, and the parts of you that have always been loved, because oftentimes we experience the pain and the fear on the journey to loving ourselves more, and I truly hope that that is what you have reconnected with in yourself. So thank you for joining me. We have a lot of astrology here over the next week with very strong Venus and Chiron energies as we move through December. So we're going to talk about those energies in today's show. I also want to give you a quick heads up that I was a guest on Starseed Radio Academy on November 26th, so just last week. And Starseed Radio Academy is one of the longest running, if not the longest running podcast for Starseeds. Lavendar and Ariel have been doing the show for 10 years. And in fact, Lavendar uh, has been in the world of starseed research and astrological tracking for three decades. She is the one who coined the phrase starseeds. And I know it's more commonly used now. It's become a little bit more popular, perhaps even on the border of mainstream. Uh, But she originated this word, and this podcast is excellent for starseeds. Uh, Lavendar has also been the one who's been decoding what starseed markings are in your astrology chart, what the degrees are, where they're located, what that's about. So she's done a lot of work in decades of time, in in this lifetime, I should say, uh, of understanding the starseed mission. So please check out their podcast. It's on Blog Talk Radio. It's called Starseed Radio Academy, or you can go to their website, which is starseedhotline.com. In my conversation with them, we talked about the upcoming American Revolution with the Pluto return in the American chart. Uh, We talked about the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. Uh, We talked about various astrology uh, things here and there. And then I also went through all 12 houses in the astrology chart and what each of the 12 houses means and what it's about. So if any of that is of interest of you, you may want to check out that conversation. So in this week in December, we have some very interesting energies happening. We have very strong Capricorn energies at this time. Now that Jupiter and Venus are in Capricorn alongside Saturn and Pluto. So that's four planets in Capricorn. 
We also have the sun traveling through Sagittarius, but the sun is traveling alone during much of its Sagittarius journey at this time. The sun will make a square to Neptune in Pisces at 15 degrees on December 7th. And when the sun squares Neptune, something is confused. There's a slowdown. There's a sense of, I don't know. I don't know what I want. I thought I wanted this, but then I maybe, maybe I don't. So there's a break. There's a pause. There's a sense of just flow. And if you come up against an unexpected slowdown, a yellow light, a red light, it's an opportunity to get out of your ego, which the sun in Sagittarius can have a lot of. Uh, it's to step away from your human self and surrender to the spiritual will, which is Neptune and Pisces. It's also your higher self, and it's also the parts of you that you just feel feel and you sense and your intuition is deeply connected with. So there is an ego reprogramming or an ego release when the sun in Sagittarius squares Neptune and Pisces. Again, this is on December 7th. And it's just allowing a part of your expectations to be removed. So go lightly with yourself, go lightly with others. Uh, don't force anything, but just allow the unfolding to occur. And that's always a good way to approach a square to Neptune. Because Neptune is quite powerful in its removal, in the illusions, uh, in the sense of I don't know, I can't see, there's confusion. So understand that part of what we're doing is saying, I don't have to be attached to this. I don't have to know. And Sagittarius likes to know. So again, uh, December 7th, and the energy will be increasing on December 6th, but just know it's okay to release yourself from having it all figured out at that time. Now, Mercury enters Sagittarius on December 10th, and this adds more of that fire in the sky. And so this is an energy that will support the Sagittarian energies, but there's still this sense of we can feel our energy is elsewhere and it's in the Capricorn places in our chart. So while the Sagittarius energies want us to have a good time and have some fun, go to parties, enjoy the holidays, you know, enjoy what is happening, be grateful, be thankful, there's other parts of us that are quite serious right now. Serious in taking care of what is important, what is essential. And also I'm feeling as I'm feeling it as these waves in the ethers that we're picking up on and that are increasing. And it's essentially some waves of anticipation around the January 2020 very big energies. And I'm feeling like that's where much of our energy is going right now where we're needing to stay in the moment, in the gratefulness of the journey, in the trust of the experiences that we're having now. But it's almost like being in two places where a part of you is very much about all of the energy that Capricorn is requiring you to focus on and take care of. So with Mercury in Sagittarius, there's a sense of the busyness of life picking up, a restlessness. Uh, Mercury is actually weakened in Sagittarius because he is at his farthest point from Gemini, which is his home sign. And so in Sagittarius, he can tell jokes, have a great laugh, have a good time, go out, travel, seek, but he misses the details. He can say the wrong thing. And then be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Or he can get swept away in the bigger picture and lose track of reality. So there's a sense of our minds are elsewhere and our energy is elsewhere. We're not quite as, I feel it as like this grounding or centeredness. It could feel even like you're scattered, energetically scattered. 
So what's really important is to always call your energy back to you now and to bring it all back into this moment because this moment is where your power resides and this moment is where your energy is needed the most. And it's from this moment that we create the next moment and the next moment and so on. So the more that you can keep your energy in the present now, the more you are going to be in your power. And as I say this, I'm getting the visual of all seven chakras being lit up and being strengthened. And it's similar to where you, when you have a light bulb that has a dimmer switch and that dimmer switch could show that the light is on, the energy is pulsing, but it's diminished, right? It's dimmed out. And this is saying, bring all of your energy back into right now. Don't worry about the future. Don't go too far into 2020 or anything in your mind that's been perhaps circling or taking you out of step with this reality. Come back into the power of having that dimmer switch turned up all the way in each of your chakras right now. And that will help center you, even the visual of it. Even looking at, if you were to do a visual scan of your own energy field, uh, and you might say, okay, well, some of my chakras are really bright right now, but others are softer or they're not as strong as I know they could be. They need to be cleansed. Uh, That could be a good visual for you to do is to look at where your energy can be strengthened right now. And then I'm seeing how this is actually very important to the current Capricorn energies, which are about the physical structures of our body. So as you strengthen your chakras and your energy system, then you also will support your physical structure and your physical body in feeling stronger too. It all works together. It all coincides, of course. So a lot about this time is being in your body, being in right now with a deepening trust in yourself, as well as a strengthening of self-love. Now, Venus in Capricorn is going to make some powerful connections over the next week as she meets up with Neptune in Pisces, Saturn in Capricorn, and Pluto in Capricorn. She is going to sextile Neptune on December 8th, conjunct Saturn at 18 or 19 and 19 degrees of Capricorn, December 10th and 11th, and then conjunct Pluto at 21 degrees of Capricorn on December 12th. So every time we have a personal planet making these big connections with the outer planets, a part of ourselves evolves permanently. And this is the Venus energy in your chart, which is that self-acceptance, self-love, feeling worthy, uh, feeling strong in who you are. In Capricorn, she's very much in charge of herself. It's about energy mastery, believing that you're worth it, believing that you're here to be successful and to be strong in your soul gifts. And as Venus makes these connections over the next week, she is being rewired, reprogrammed, and strengthened with this Capricorn energy of reality checks and the sense of what can I commit to? What do I want? What do I want to commit to? And what is frivolous or what no longer interests me? What needs to go? And over this next week, allow yourself time for clarity. Capricorn takes its time. It doesn't rush. It doesn't try to do too much or go too far. So you could need time to get back to somebody, time to make a decision, time to sit with something and feel the energy in your body. And that can help you with your answers where you understand I'm going to go in this direction now because I know I can do this. It brings me joy. It's what I want. It's where I feel confident, where I feel good about myself. And I know something good will come from this. So the Venus and Capricorn energies are requiring a maturity and a seriousness right now. And it's asking you to really get clear around your relationship with yourself And then how that energy 
shows up in other areas of your life, such as with the typical Venus areas of our life, which is money, finances, what we buy, what we own, uh, being able to receive, showing up in relationships, giving and receiving in relationships. This Venus in Capricorn is independent and she's not afraid to go it alone. So it means there's something within you that needs to be experienced on your own terms. And it could be an elevation that you know you've earned. And what I mean by that is that if you've really been working with your self-value and self-love this year and in previous years, it's really been restructured within you what you're capable of experiencing in this life. And that's not about entitlement. That's not about I deserve it because I just deserve it. It's not from the ego. It's from a place of, I'm feeling it as like this deep energy in the marrow of our bone. It's like a deep, dense energy of, I am worthy of experiencing the best things in life. I am worthy of flying first class everywhere I travel. I am worthy of being recognized for my soul mastery. It's a sense of self-respect. It's the self-respect you've earned through the hard knocks of life, through the wounds and the scars and the fears and the heartbreak. You've earned some things that you probably aren't even aware of yet. And now this Venus is interacting with Neptune in Pisces, Saturn, and Pluto that are each recognizing her. It's like being at a graduation ceremony. Venus walks up onto the stage and Neptune, Saturn, and Pluto each hand her a certification, a diploma, you know, something that says, look at how far you've come. And I'm just feeling this energy so powerfully right now because there's been a lot of difficult trials for feminine energies. And that would be the divine feminine energies within all of us, regardless of your gender or your sex. It's the feminine energies. Okay, I'm getting the image of the glass ceiling, right? Of that sense of it, it could only go so far or you felt either through reality or illusion that you could only go so far. This is superseding those expectations, that glass ceiling. This is moving through to a higher platform. Because you freaking earned it. Uh, and Capricorn makes us earn it, you know, to put in the sweat and the time and the long hours and to stick with it. And even though Venus is, is typically most powerful in other astrological signs, I feel like her journey through Capricorn is a graduation of the feminine energies is a strengthening is a is a executive power energy that is asking for you to own it and to connect with a deeper belief in loving yourself and i'm feeling this now across many lifetimes for some of you that you've been healing the same theme. You've, you've been on the karmic loop or Groundhog's Day or you've been playing these same roles over and over and over again, as many of us have because that's how we learn. We learn through the repetition. We learn through repeating cycles and we learn, oh, okay, wait, I can do this differently this time because last time I did it that way and it brought me this consequence or this outcome. I'm going to do it a different way now. So that's part of this Venus reprogramming is that she's learning to do it differently because she loves herself more. 
She's recognizing the path she's been on. Ugh. And as I see that, I'm getting the image of um, glass shards on dirt. So the hard, intense, painful path has strengthened you at a very deep level. And the universe is saying, please recognize this in yourself. Please accept this in yourself. Please understand that we see this in you. Oh, wow. And, and then I'm getting that image again of Neptune, Saturn, and Pluto standing on the stage, handing out the certification of like, no, we see this in you. Please see this in yourself. So it feels quite powerful, uh, the energy that I'm picking up around all this. And then off to the side of the stage, you have Jupiter and Capricorn, the very uh, proud father, the very proud energy that's also nodding his head. Uh, you know, this is Zeus. Uh, this is the energy of uh, the one who has seen how far you've come. And so this could be a father figure in your life, um, whether that is a biological or figurative. But I also feel that the father energy could be God the father, uh, could be spirit, uh, could be whatever you identify with or whatever archetype works for you. There's a sense of understanding that when strength is developed and when it is earned, it can no longer be taken away from you unless you allow it. So there's a recognition of what you've earned along the journey within you. And again, it's not even about what maybe you've earned or accumulated externally. It's what you've earned along the way that you know is your truth and you know what you've been through and you know the intensity of it all the universe sees you. That's what I'm feeling. Um, it's really powerful. And I feel like there is an important understanding right now that you see yourself. And it feels quite emotional, honestly, because I think that for many, going back to these loops and these energy cycles you've been in, there were lifetimes that you dreamed of this graduation. There were lifetimes that you wanted to break out of the cycles, of the loops, of the consequences, of the karma, but it wasn't time. Um, you hadn't matured enough. There wasn't the energy on the planet to support it, but now there is. But now there is. So it feels really encouraging. Now, I know that there's other interpretations of the Venus conjunct Saturn and Venus conjunct Pluto um, that are quite... Uh, intense, uh, and they're, I'm not picking up on this at, at this time. I'm picking up on a very clear, strong, feminine energy of perseverance, fortitude, and self-respect. And so that's how I'm interpreting the energies um, as they're playing out here over this next week. Now, the other strong energy uh, relates to Chiron. And Chiron is going very slow right now in Aries retrograde. Chiron is going to station direct on December 13th at 1 degree 26 minutes of Aries. And so whenever a planet is preparing to station direct, its influence is stronger. It's like it's reverberating out in a more powerful way. Uh, but in addition to that, we have a few planets making connections to Chiron. So this Chiron in Aries, going back to one degrees, is nearly the very, very beginning of the zodiac, because the zodiac begins at zero degrees of Aries. And so this is a Chiron at one degree that is now aware that it's existing, because Aries is the energy of a new start, uh, the Big Bang, a uh, creation coming through. And it comes through with a burst and a power, and it's sort of like, Alakazam, I'm here. But Chiron is about our 
fears, our vulnerabilities, the parts of us that are developing confidence to be here. So this Chiron at one degree of Aries is where you're meant to claim a part of yourself that has been uncertain about your self-identity now. Chiron was last at this point in March of 2019, at this one degree point. And what have you come to accept in yourself since March? You would look at where transiting Chiron is in your natal chart for this understanding. What have you been building confidence in? Where have you been accepting who you are and gaining power in this self-identity? Because the Chiron in Aries energy comes through with the wounded ego and a sense of, am I good enough? Is it okay to be me? Um, Am I able to move ahead with these new parts of myself? There's a warrior energy here with Aries. And so do I feel strong enough to be myself, to be this fighter, maverick, leader? And where is this energy compromised for other people? A strong Aries is strong in self. And when that energy is dissipated, it really is concerned about what other people think or what other people perceive or where you have to, where you think you have to be a certain way for others to accept you, to see you, to belong, all these things that we move through when we awaken. And I guess what I'm feeling so strongly right now is that we're healing across multiple lifetimes the ability to be yourself, have confidence in who you are, and the development of courage to stand up for yourself. Because again, I'm getting this image of that very strong energy system, um, similar to the chakras that I spoke about, but it's the sense of, no, I'm me and that's enough. And it's a development of confidence. It's a development of confidence that perhaps I'm feeling like it drifted away, like something was lost around the layers of confidence Okay, and now I'm getting the image of the fear body because there was fears of being yourself. Uh, There were fears to show up in the world as who you truly are because of very, I'm going to call it very outdated and stale programming around belief systems, judgments, what is right, what is wrong. A lot of this feels very much connected to religious conditioning and programming around if you're good enough, if God sees you, if God loves you, Um, kind of all the energy around redemption and even some persecution. And it's like a lot of things that we've picked up along the way, whether that's this lifetime or other lifetimes, I'm feeling like all of that has activated the fear body which activates the pain body, which activates the emotional body. And then it creates this like PTSD that is paralyzing. This is really interesting. It's like I'm seeing all these different layers of energy that have just been paralyzed. Okay, and now they're showing me a jello cake. You know how it's like multiple levels of jello and they're all stuck together or they're all in these layers, but they all move together. It's like that jello dance and it's been paralyzing. There's something that's been paralyzing about standing in the strength of who you are. And now there could be even an impatience with yourself about it. Like, why the F am I still in this spot? Or why the F do I still feel this way? And I'm saying that because uh, the Aries energy is impatient and it gets angry quickly. And it says, no more, I'm done with this. I don't want this anymore. And I'm feeling like when Mercury in Sagittarius enters 
will enter Sagittarius on December 10th. It makes an immediate trine to this Chiron in Aries, which gives it fire, impatience, a burst of energy, and a new realization around how you're going to perceive yourself and a new commitment to being who you are. And then at the same time, we have Jupiter and Capricorn squaring Chiron and Aries at that one degrees from December 7th through the 11th. So the Jupiter square to Chiron is very much about all or nothing. And this is where you can make some big decisions or big choices that something is complete on your terms. There could also be and, and it's, I mean, I'm getting the image of, you know, you throw out the baby with the bath, with the bath water. It's kind of that I'm just done with all of this and no more, but there's tension in the square because Capricorn wants you to go slow, but Aries wants to rip off the bandaid and be done with it. So there's something to wisely manage December 7th through the 11th with Jupiter and Capricorn squaring Chiron and Aries. There's a management here of being strong in yourself, but not making any dis decisions or choices that really aren't wise or responsible. Understand that there, I, I just feel like, okay, I'm feeling like there's so much that's energetically over, even if it's still in your head. And so it's clearing out what you've been locked into thinking. And we've had this very long journey with Mercury and Scorpio, which does stay locked into things. It can stay locked into resentment, into pain, into feelings, into what someone said, into what someone did. And now with Mercury going into Sagittarius, where it's going to be moving very quickly, um, there's a sense of I'm ready for the new start, the next perception, and to go higher. So look at where you are reanimating a story in your head, but that story is really done. It's over. It's cleared out. And now you're being asked to take responsibility for how you've kept it going or you've kept it circling in your own mind. And the universe, God's source spirit is saying, think of a new way that this story can move forward. Interestingly, there are no air signs right now. So the air signs are where we would typically talk and share and write it out where we would get together with friends and others and be able to discuss things more readily and more easily. But with no air signs, it can feel like, no, it's really within me. It's in my own energy. It's in my body and my feelings and my uh, sense of self and my actions. It's a more internal energy. And this is part of the necessity of energy responsibility and Letting yourself go, you know, letting yourself move forward. Looking at how you've held yourself back, probably unintentionally. But there's an energy of, okay, what's next? We have Venus graduating. Uh, we have Chiron understanding where he wasn't able to stand in himself and be confident. And all of these parts of us are being fortified now, being fortified to move forward so that you can recognize who you are now. And I, I just feel a peace around it. I feel a peace where there was turbulence and a lot of waves and storm. It's like there's this smoother water. And that could be what's new for you. That sense of peace around something that's been very intense, emotional, 
uh, stirred up a lot of stuff in your life. To now have peace is your assignment. Where can you let yourself be at this neutral place? Where can you accept it as is? And it is a lesson or rather a practice in acceptance of when a cycle closes. And new cycles are always beginning just as cycles are always closing. But this is a big closing for many of you, a big chapter in your life, a big time period, big lessons, big karma, uh, big energies, big, big, big. And so now I'm going back to this sun in Sagittarius squaring Neptune and Pisces of the removal of your ego, the removal of expectations, the removal of what is right or wrong. And that's a big part of the Sagittarius energy right now, too, is that, you know, Sagittarius has opinions and it says, well, this is right and this is wrong. And that can happen at various levels of consciousness. The lower levels of consciousness are very judgmental. Uh, It's where a lot of religious programming has existed for centuries. It's like saying you do this and you're a good person. If you step out of line, you're a bad person. We're going to, you know, kick you out of the family. If you don't stay in this line, we're going to move you away from the tribe. Um, So it brought up a lot of the root chakra fears of survival. Because it was that sense of, well, if they kick me out, if they don't accept me, if they don't love me, if they don't, if if I don't stay with them, if I don't belong, then I lose everything. Like that was the unconscious perception. But what is really important at this time is that so many of you are needed to move forward because you're leaders. And this Chiron in Aries is asking you to be that leader in your life and to say, okay, I learned a lot from this group, from this family, from these people, from this job. And now I need to move forward into the next adventure, the next dream, the next chapter. And I'm going to meet even more people. And it doesn't mean that you wish others ill. In fact, you don't want to do that. You know, you want to do no harm. You don't want to um, send anybody the, the bad energy or do anything painful or create any Thing insulting. You just want to move on and move ahead because you are that person in your area, community, family, wherever you are. You are that person who's needed to move ahead. And that's what you're being called to do right now. And this can happen in various ways. And it's requiring you to stand on your own to be independent, to be in a place of high regard for yourself, to be in your self-respect, to walk with integrity, to honor your own, I'm hearing moral character, and to be, it's like this energy of complete self-acceptance and to not think you have to keep punishing yourself or you have to do something else. It's really interesting. Basically, it's sort of like calling all this energy back to yourself that you've given to other people, that you've given outside of yourself, uh, that you gave to a job title or to a family member or to a relationship or even to an experience you had, like to energetically keep giving time and attention to that experience. It's just like, no, allow it to be what it is. Calm the mind calm the emotional body, calm the fear body, calm the pain body. And I feel like this is all being rewired or restructured when it is your intention to do so. And I do feel that it's requiring some physical work right now to work with the fear body or the pain body or the emotional body. Uh, you know, I I love acupuncture. Um, Reiki helps. Anything with physical touch, uh, sound healing can help. Anything that's helping remove blockages. Um, EFT tapping is excellent for this type of healing work. And as I'm saying all this, I'm getting again that image of the jello 
cake. It's kind of like a jello tower where all those energies have been stuck together. And I'm seeing orange, green, red jello. And then the jello all melts away. It just melts, it dissolves, and it just relaxes. Instead of being paralyzed, it relaxes. And as I say this, I just realized another transit that's happening this week is the Mars and Scorpio trining Neptune and Pisces at 15 degrees. That's December 11th to December 13th. That Mars trining Neptune is the jello mold dissolving, removing what has been stuck or paralyzed. And again, I feel this is in the body and Mars being the body and Mars and Scorpio being also the emotional body, the fear body. Uh, working with this very intentionally right now is going to support you in incredible ways. You could feel like a new person. You could feel very strong. Um, this Mars is also the ruler of Chiron and Aries. So there's a sense here now of paying attention to what your body is telling you, honoring it, caring for it, and knowing how it's helping you clear out some deeper wounds or energies that you're ready to let go of. So it's quite a beautiful week. I really feel that overall in the energies. It feels quite lovely, supportive, kind, caring, regeneration of self-respect and love for what you've been through, a sense of that graduation energy, but also recognition from God's source spirit, the universe. And, and, and I mentioned this on Monday's show, keep going. The strength to keep going. The strength to keep moving ahead and moving on without looking back, without getting stuck in where you've been. Uh, now, Venus is also making a conjunction to the south node in Capricorn. And that is part of the release the release of what was, of where you've been. Um, I do feel this as the energetic release of a glass ceiling. Uh, the south node is where we release karma, what's complete, what's done, what's over. And there's a sense that, okay, it went. It went. It, I, <laughs> that's such a weird thing to say, I know. But it went through me. Um, it was a part of my life. And it was something that I learned from. But now it's over. And I'm moving on. During Sagittarius season, make sure and have some fun. Do something that makes you feel alive and feel positive about what has transpired this year. The best of this year, uh, perhaps even the best of this decade. And that can also be simply through the lens of your spiritual maturity and your soul growth. It has certainly been a big time for many of us. And we are being fortified to keep going and to be ready for the next chapter at hand. So thank you for joining me on today's podcast. I'll be back on Monday for another episode. And I hope that you enjoy the very best over of the energies over this next week. Uh, please keep in mind that you can learn more about your 2020 astrology uh, by looking at my 2020 Soul Growth Astrology webinar. And I also have for you a January 2020 webinar that goes through all of the astrology of the month of January. We look at the transits of Mercury, Venus, and Mars. We look at that lunar eclipse and then the Aquarius new moon. We talk about the themes of the month, what's really important in your chart in terms of Capricorn and Aquarius energy. So this is a brand new webinar. It's different than the year-long 2020 Soul Growth webinar. I'm doing monthly astrology webinars now so that you can plan for the month ahead, uh, manage your expectations accordingly, know what to expect, know what's coming down the road, and then also uh, be very aware of your own astrology chart even more. So please check out those details below this podcast. Otherwise, I will see you back here on Monday. And I wish you a beautiful week ahead with many blessings and wonderful gifts. Thank you so much for joining me. 
You can find out more about me at mollymccord.online or at consciouscoolchic.com. Those are just two of my four websites. So thanks, friends, and I'll see you soon.